Today we're going to start learning about loops inside JavaScript. And loops is something that we use quite often whenever we want to create some kind of JavaScript application. So it's very important that we learn about loops. Now the one we're going to talk about today because there's actually quite a few loops to choose from is the one called a for loop. Now to give you guys an idea about what a loop actually does, basically when we have a bunch of information or a bunch of data, like the array that I have here that has a bunch of names inside of it, and I want to spit out all the names inside the browser, we can use a loop in order to loop through the array and get all the data and spit them out one by one. So to give you guys an example here, let's actually go and see what we have inside my document. Right now I have a paragraph that has an ideas text and I have my array down here with my names in it. And then I also have a document get element by ID that spits out something inside the paragraph up here. Now right now I'm actually not spitting anything inside the browser, but we will be spitting out the data once we do actually create the for loop. So in order to create a for loop, let's actually just go ahead and get started so you guys can see how it looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and write for parentheses, curly brackets, and this is basically how a for loop actually looks like. Now inside the parentheses, we need to insert three different parameters. Now two of these parameters are actually optional and we can actually decide if we want to include these inside the parentheses or not. So we're just gonna go ahead and use all three of them and then I'll explain what exactly we need to use and which ones you can decide to leave out. So inside the for loop, inside the parentheses, we need to write some kind of condition. The condition is something that's gonna keep looping as long as the condition is actually true inside the code. So right now, let's actually go ahead and say we have a variable called i, which is equal to zero, semicolon. Now what this basically does is that it says, okay, when we loop inside this for loop, we have a variable called i, which starts out being zero when we start the loop. Then later on, as we do actually loop through this loop, we're gonna increase i by one each time we loop once, meaning that i is gonna change over time depending on how many times we do actually loop out this loop. Then what we wanna say is that after we declare that i is equal to zero, we want to say that, well, as long as i is less than some kind of number, which could, for example, be five in this case, then we want to keep looping. Now this number here is very important because if we don't declare some kind of number, we create something called an infinite loop. So if we don't put a limit on how many times we should actually loop out this loop, then it's gonna keep looping inside the browser and essentially it will end up crashing the browser. So it's very important we don't create these infinite loops. So basically what I've done here is I've said, okay, i is equal to zero and I want to keep looping as long as i is lesser than five. So right now we do have an infinite loop because we don't set any kind of increments inside our for loop, meaning that we want to increase i by a certain amount each time we loop through it. So the last parameter is going to be the amount that we want to increase i each time we're done looping. So right now I can actually go ahead and say we have i plus plus, which is an incrementer that says that each time we're done looping, it should go ahead and run this condition here, which right now says that i has to increase by one. So at some point, i will become greater than four which means that this condition here is no longer gonna be true. So what we can do is we can actually go ahead and do something inside this for loop. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here, just to show you guys, is I'm gonna go ahead and set a variable right on top of the for loop. I'm gonna say we have a variable called text, which is equal to nothing right now. Now inside variable text, I'm gonna go ahead and insert data each time we loop through the for loop. So inside the for loop, I'm gonna go ahead and say we have variable text and I want to set it equal to variable text plus some kind of data. So right now we could actually set it plus variable i up here, which means that right now, when we loop out variable text, we should be getting zero, one, two, three, four inside the browser. So if I were to actually go ahead and say we have variable text, insert it inside my insert statement down here, and actually refresh the browser, you guys can see we get zero, one, two, three, four. So now we're actually looping out these numbers. Now remember variable i when we start out the loop is zero and it's gonna keep increasing until we get to the number five. So we should be getting zero, one, two, three, four. Now what we can also do here using this array up here is we can actually go ahead and say we want to get the length of the array and insert it inside our parameter down here instead of five. So I can actually go ahead and say we have names and I want to insert it instead of five, and then I want to get the length of this array. 
So right now we should actually be getting five because we have five pieces of data inside this array. Then each time we loop through this loop down here, I want to actually spit out the names one by one. So what we can do instead of saying text is equal to text is we can actually go ahead and delete text here and the plus sign. And right before the equal sign, we're going to go ahead and say plus, meaning that text is going to be equal to itself plus whatever's after the equal sign. So doing it this way is the exact same way as doing it this way. Okay. So we're just going to write it more simple. Now, if you guys are asking, why do we need to set text equal to text, you know, itself, and then plus it by whatever data is inside the loop. It's because each time we spit out something inside the paragraph tag down here using the get element by ID in a HTML, it deletes the data we have inside the paragraph and inserts the new data from the new loop. So we need to say that text should be equal to itself first before we start adding the other data. Okay. Otherwise it's just going to keep deleting itself and we will only get the last number or the last data from inside the loop. To actually show you guys this, let's actually go ahead and go back and say text is equal to text plus I and actually go ahead and delete text plus. You guys can see that right now we're going to get four. So we need to make sure we set text equal to text. So I'm going to go ahead and say we have text plus equal to I. And in this case, I don't want to say I anymore. I want to say names brackets and then inside the brackets, I want to insert I. So right now, the first time we loop through this loop, it's going to say names brackets and then zero inside the brackets. Then it's going to increase by one the next time, which means that now we're going to get text is equal to text plus names one inside the brackets. And then it's going to keep going until we get lesser than the amount of data we have inside this array in here. So now if we were to go back inside the browser, you guys can see we now get Daniel, Jane, John, Sarah, and Toby. We could also go ahead and say we have a break like so include the plus symbol here. And then now if we do actually go ahead and refresh the browser, you guys can see we get Daniel, Jane, John, Sarah, Toby on different lines. So this is how it can loop through uh, data using a for loop inside JavaScript. Now I did actually mention that two of these parameters inside the parentheses are actually optional. So let's actually go ahead and talk about that. Right now we have variable I set equal to zero. If I wanted to, I could actually go ahead and take this, copy it, delete it and insert it before the for loop up here like so. And it would actually go ahead and accept this as a parameter because we have the variable I up here, which is equal to zero. And then we still have the second parameter in here that says that I has to be lesser than, you know, five because we have five different data inside this array up here. So it's still going to go ahead and count I, even though the I is outside the parentheses of the for loop. So we don't actually need the first parameter in here, but you do need to include the semicolon first. Now the second optional parameter is going to be the last one here where we say I plus plus. We can actually go ahead and copy it, delete it and insert it at the end of our for loop down here. So right now we'll actually increase I by one right at the end of the for loop. So this is the same as putting it inside the parentheses. If I were to save this, refresh the browser, you guys can see we get the exact same data. So we get no errors or anything like that because it does the exact same thing. The only parameter that you have to have inside the for loop is the middle one that says, when do we need to stop looping? Now in this episode, the for in loop is a loop that handles objects. Meaning that if I were to have an object like the one I have up here called person, I can spit out all the data from person using a for in loop. So as you guys can see inside my screen here, right now I have a paragraph that has an idea as text. I have a object called person. I have a variable called text, which is equal to some kind of string. We don't actually have any kind of data inside text yet. And then I have a for loop down here from the previous episode, which we're going to change into a for in loop. Then down at the bottom, I simply spit out the data from inside text. So what we want to do here is inside the for loop in order to create a for in loop, I'm going to go ahead and delete all the data inside the parentheses. Now what we're going to insert instead is going to be, first of all, some kind of variable that we're going to use inside the loop when we do actually get inside the curly brackets. So right now I'm going to save a variable called X and then I'm going to go ahead and use the keyword in some kind of object, which is going to be in this case person because my variable up here, or my object up here is called person. So right now what I'm saying is that each time we reference to X inside this loop, it's going to spit out a piece of data from person. So if I go inside the loop here, I can actually go ahead and say we have person 
And then inside, instead of I, I can actually use X. So right now we're saying, okay, when we loop the first time, it's going to take a look at person, which is up here. And it's going to go ahead and say, well, we have X, meaning that we want to get the first data and spit it out. Then we're going to go to the next line. Then the second time we loop, we're going to check, is there more data in here? Yes, there is. There's a second piece of data called hair color. I'm going to go ahead and spit that out inside the browser again, because we reference to person and then the variable X, which symbolizes one piece of data from inside person up here. So if I were to actually go inside my browser now and refresh the browser, you guys can see if I were to zoom in here, is that we do actually get Daniel, Brown and Blue, which is the three different data we have inside person up here. Today we're going to learn about the while loop inside JavaScript. And the while loop is a personal favorite of mine because I use it quite often whenever I need to create any kind of application. So in order to explain the while loop, inside the parentheses of this while loop that I have inside my screen here, the basic idea is kind of the same as an if statement. Inside the parentheses, you write some kind of condition that has to be true. And if it's true, it's going to go ahead and run the code inside the curly brackets. Now in this case, because this is not an if statement, this is a while loop, it's going to go ahead and spit out loops as long as the condition inside the parentheses are actually true. So to give you guys an example here, let's actually go ahead and say that we have variable x up here. And as long as it's lesser than 10, it's going to go ahead and loop out whatever's inside the while loop inside the browser. So right now, just like in the previous episodes, I went ahead and took text from up here, which right now is empty. I went ahead and said that we wanted to take text and set it equal to whatever comes after the equal sign. So right now we do actually have something from the previous episode. Let's actually go ahead and delete that. And instead we're going to go ahead and spit out X because right now X is equal to zero, meaning that it's going to keep looping out X as long as this condition up here is true. Now, right now we have something called an infinite loop. And this is not something we want to have because if I were to refresh the browser, as you guys can see, Right now my browser is actually loading and loading and loading and it's actually not doing anything. So, oh snap, something went wrong because my browser ran out of memory. So we want to make sure we don't have this infinite loop inside our loops. So if I go back inside the code, I can go ahead and say, well, okay, the first time we loop through the while loop, we want to increase X by a certain amount. So underneath here, I'm going to go ahead and say we have X and then I can set it equal to itself plus one if I wanted to, and then it's going to keep adding one to X each time we loop, meaning that at some point X is going to be greater than nine and this loop is not going to run anymore. Now we do actually have an easier way to write this, which is just X plus plus, which is an incrementer. So we're just going to go ahead and do it this way instead. Now, if I were to save this, refresh my browser, you guys can see that now we get zero, one, two, three, four, all the way to nine, because right now I set the limit to 10. We could also change this into 20 if you wanted to, and now we'll get a lot more loops going on inside the browser. And this is basically how a while loop works inside JavaScript. Now, the next thing I want to show you guys is that I did actually include an array on top of the code here. Now, what I'm going to do using the while loop is I'm going to go ahead and loop out all the data from inside the array. So what I can do here is I can actually go ahead and say, well, first of all, we need to get the length of this array here. So right now I have five pieces of data inside of it, but I need to get that in some kind of number. So what I can do here is I can actually go ahead and say we want X to be lesser than the number of data we have inside the array by saying names dot length, like so. And then inside the while loop, we can go ahead and say we want to insert the names data inside text. So the way we do that is by saying we have names brackets around the X, and then we're going to go ahead and insert X inside the bracket. So the first time we loop through this X, X is going to be equal to zero, meaning we're going to get the first data from inside the array. Then the second time we're increasing X by one, meaning that the second time we get Jane. So if we were to go inside my browser and refresh it, you guys can see we get Daniel, Jane, John, Sarah, and Toby. So just to show you guys, we don't have to use the for loop if we want to get our data from inside arrays. We can actually modify it and get our data using a while loop as well. And there's a lot of different possibilities using loops and a lot of time to actually notice that you can actually choose which loop you want to use depending on the purpose of the application. Today, we're going to continue learning about loops. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the do while loop. Now the do while loop is very similar to the while loop we talked about in the previous episode. But the main difference here is that in the while loop, 
we first check is the condition inside the parentheses true, and if it is, then we run the block of code we have inside the curly brackets. Now when we have a do while loop, it's the exact opposite. So first, we run the block of code, and then we check if the condition is true, and if it is, it's going to go ahead and continue running the block of code afterwards. So to give you guys an example here, let's actually go ahead and create a do while loop on top of this while loop here. So the first thing we're going to do is going to write do curly brackets, and then after the curly brackets, we're going to go ahead and write while. Now after the parentheses, we're going to go ahead and end off the code with a semicolon. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and copy the text we have down here and insert it inside the do curly brackets. So right now, the first thing that's going to happen is that the do is going to go ahead and run the block of code, and then afterwards it's going to check, is the condition still true? So right now, if we were to insert x is lesser than 10, and delete what we have down here, like so, first of all, it's going to go ahead and run the block of code, and then it's going to go ahead and check if x is lesser than 10. If I go inside the browser, you guys can see this is from the while loop, what we have from 0 till 9, because x has to be lesser than 10. If we were to refresh, you guys can see we get the exact same thing. Again, the main difference here is that in the do while loop, we run the block of code first, and then we increment x, and then we check if the condition is still true. So there's a main difference here, depending on what application you're building. Personally, I don't actually use the do while loop very often, but just to show you guys that we do actually have one called a do while loop. Now the do while loop is actually the last loop we have inside JavaScript, so in the next episode, we're going to start doing some kind of exercise using all the loops we've learned so far inside JavaScript. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.